Good morning, Honorable Chair and Honorable Members. My name is Abraham Masangu. I'm the Chief Information Officer at SASA. Good morning. My name is Ingrid Mohai. I'm the PLO to the Department. Good morning, Honorable Chair, Members, Minister. I'm Mark Barnes from SAPA. Okay, Auditor General's Office. Good morning, Honorable Chair and Honorable Members. My name is Logan van Vieven from the AG. Good morning, Honorable Chair, Members, TNCL of Auditor General. Good morning, Honorable Members, uh, Chair, uh, Walter Bengu, Auditor General. All right. Uh, comrades, may we introduce ourselves? Good morning, Chair. Good morning, Minister. I'm Nyame Zilipoe, Member of the Committee. Mela Mudula Stulo, Kesaki Kekal. Member Committee. Good morning, Chairperson, Honorable Minister Nichi. My name is Tapelo Chilwan, Member of the Committee. Good morning, Members. Ntabisem uh, Kuno, Member of the Committee. Molweni Kamala Mutombo Viomente, Member of the Committee. Morning, Chair. Morning, uh, Honourable Members and everyone. My name is Bridget Masango, Portfolio Committee Member on Social Development. David Ross, Member of the Committee. Right. <coughs> uh, thanks, Comrades. I'm Comrade Temba Godi. I chair the committee. <coughs> Um, well, Comrade Minister, once again, welcome to you and your team. Um, we are going to depart from the usual uh, instead of ask, us asking what we want to know, we'll give you the opportunity to tell us what you think we must know. Um, not you, Comrade Minister. I would like to over to uh, the CEO of SASA. He knows what uh, he needs to talk to us about. We, we have said we, we have an interest in, in finding out how SASA is preparing itself to comply with the uh, court judgment, constitutional court judgment. How does it envisage to fully comply with it in terms of the steps and measures taken uh, to ensure that uh, uh, 12 months from the date of that judgment uh, we do not find ourselves in a situation where we are struggling with uh, how to move into a new contractual, contractual arrangement uh, to ensure that uh, the most vulnerable in our society uh, do have access to their livelihood. Welcome, comrade. Um, <clears throat> members have already introduced themselves. Um, <clears throat> so without further ado, I will... Uh, yeah, comrade minister, now that we have formally opened the meeting, as and when it is due for you to leave, you will be free to go and attend to nutritional issues in the, in the cabinet. So, Monana later. Okay, Makwaz. Uh, thank you so much, Honorable Chair, Honorable Members, uh, Honorable Minister, and the colleagues. Uh, thank you so much for this opportunity to, to uh, be, that have been given to us to come and update the, the, the committee of what has happened since the time that we are here. I, I remember that we came at the time when there was so many things that were happening and the anxiety amongst the members here and the society at large about the 1st of April. 
we did say that we were going to pay on the 1st of April. Uh, it's common cause now that uh, 1st of April came and uh, we, we did pay. And uh, the, there was no crisis at the time that we were paying at the, the time. We didn't have much uh, 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 problems uh, in paying on the 1st of April. I have with me the team from uh, Sasa, and we, we are backed by the DSD family, and there is treasury around here with us. And I've got Ms. Mvulani, uh, uh, Zotam Mvulani, who's going to take us through of the things that have, have, have happened from the time that we're here up to what has happened until uh, uh, last exco, which was last week, and the things that will be happening tomorrow with the post office and other other stakeholders going forward. Can I be allowed to ask uh, to to take us through, Chaperson? Yeah, sure. <coughs> Good morning, um, honourable chair and um, honourable members and minister. The progress report in relation to the implementation of the constitutional court order is as follows i can indicate that um, the court has reinstated its supervisory role um, then both sasa and cps were made to be under a constitutional obligation to make sure that payments happen for the next 12 months then also the court order can be divided into three the, there's order um, four to six that um, talked to the payment and, and the, the, the readiness for Sasa to make sure that it pays. In that respect, there were issues of procurement. And in this instance, because Sasa had already um, a contract, a running contract with CPS, we had to approach National Treasury and request for deviation for procurement, and of which National Treasury responded positively towards that. Then in relation to contracting, the only thing that, uh, because the old contract was still running, um, then we had to do an addendum to the main contract, of which has been signed on, on the 31st of March. The payment uh, process plan also happened as the CO has indicated, and we managed to pay without um, any challenges, except the fact that at pay points, there were some uh, security issues where we experienced some robberies that took place. I can indicate that um, as at the end of the April payment cycle, Sasa had paid um, 10 billion to the beneficiaries. Then court order seven to nine, it um, give impetus to the reports that are supposed to be submitted by both Sasa and the minister. And also there are preparations that have to be done in relation to make sure that um, the, the SASA prepares itself for 12 months, which then uh, the 12 months um, end at the end of March 2018. Then also the report has to outline how SASA readies itself to take over payment. Um, court order number 10 there was an additional um, safeguard that the court put in relation to beneficiary personal data. The court ordered that the personal data that relates to beneficiaries should not um, should belong to SASA and should be the sole property of SASA, and it has to be enforced. And SASA has to monitor compliance of such by its service provider being CPS. Then court order number 11 and 12 spoke to the appointments of independent experts. There are two types of independent experts that needed to be appointed. The 
legal practitioners, as well as the technical experts. SASAM started the procurement process to ensure that we nominate such, but the procurement process has not been finalized because we are still awaiting the constitutional court to endorse such nomination. But Chair, I can indicate it was not SASA only that was um, given the opportunity to nominate. So all parties to the um, all pay two case were given the, that opportunity to nominate. So we are still awaiting the court to confirm. But I can indicate um, from Sasa side, we looked into all um, avenues, including using a government agency being CSIR. Then if I have to analyze now what is expected of us in terms of court order number 12, SASA has to, to do a, a plan, a, a, a plan, and in that plan it has to be divided into two. The first plan is SASA readying itself to ensure that CPS, um, it's a phase out and then there's a phase in of a new service provider, but also the plan itself has to talk to the SASA future, readying itself now to take over from whoever would have replaced um, CPS. Now, in, 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 in terms of that, we, SASA needs to look into f um, five aspects. The first one is the readiness in relation to SASA having ICT systems that are required to ensure that it becomes a full paymaster. Then also SASA has to consider looking into participating in the payment clearing um, space. Look also into the fact that because this will be a, a change program for SASA as a whole, staff as well as um, organized labor have to be taken in confidence in relation to the change that SASA will have to effect on uh, in, in, in the running of its business. And the other component that we have to consider as SASA is the issue of the budget availability. Will we have enough budget to be able to do what is expected of us as SASA? Now, matters that need to be resolved towards 2018, it's um, the SASA procurement for a new service provider that will be coming on board as, um, as at the, the first of April 2018, the phasing in and the phasing out of um, CPS. What um, SASA also has to look into, it's the, what are the activities that will be feeding into um, the 2018 program? The first one is we have been in contact with other government um, um, agencies and departments. The one that we've been um, having meetings with at SAPO, we all know that um, SAPO has a, a component of assisting SASA and they have um, volunteered their services. So we are in engagement with them and there's one that will be also taking place tomorrow, Chair, of just to check the SASA uh, and, and SAPO readiness in terms of what um, services SAPO can give to SASA. But other than that, Department of Home Affairs on the issues of the biometric. But um, in the issue of biometric chair, I can indicate it's in twofold. The SASA is also taking biometric for from three three-month-old babies to 15-year-olds, of which currently the Department of Home Affairs do not have such biometrics. So we are considering um, talking to both CSIR as, as well as checking with SAPO on the relation of storing of such biometrics. 
because we will be utilizing biometrics for authentication as well as the verification that you are the correct person. Then um, I can move into other um, processes and now beyond 2018. We are in preparation of doing a plan of which it has to be deposited on or before the 17th of June with the Constitutional Court. And um, we had promised the minister that such a plan, a draft will be given to her by next week chairperson of which also there will be a tentative budget. Then to be able to workshop as to whether will Sasa be able to do what it plans to do in relation to the budget it has. Then in conclusion, I can indicate that in the month of March, after the judgment was given, we were just planning for the payment. Then in the month of April, the first two weeks thereof, we were, we were then paying and monitoring such payment. Then um, the, from the from April till to date, we are engaging all major stakeholders to see how SASA can be able to unfold and develop a costed time, um, a, a costed plan which has um, time frames for the implementation of the court order. I thank you, Chairperson. All right, Mr. Mugwaz. Uh, thank you so much, Chair. Well, what we've, 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 we've decided to do, uh, as I think she has indicated, is that we are going to have a workshop with the post office tomorrow, which is going to be a whole day affair, uh, where we'll ascertain the services that the post office can be able to render to us. And uh, the thinking that we have as, a, as a SASA uh, is that we want to embark on the build, operate, and transfer system where if the post office comes in or whoever that comes in will help us in preparing, preparing ourselves to, to take over from that. So if we go that route, then it will help us to take over full, the full stock of what, what is supposed to happen and SASA then takes over which we envisage that is going to be an issue of two to three years to the maximum of five years that we'll be preparing ourselves and taking over. And in five years' time, we feel that we'll be ready to take over. I think it can happen before before the time, but if there are hiccups, then we have set ourselves for a period of five years. I thank you, Chair. All right, comrades. Um, <clears throat> there you have it. You see, my, my only problem, Mr. Mokwaza, is that uh, you, you know, and uh, Ms. Velase, Velane, yeah, you, you know, you're speaking in, in tentative terms, you know. It's almost as if you, you woke up after the court judgment and said, well, we have a problem in our hands. Because, okay, it's fine. Let me leave it for comrades for now, and maybe I can I can come on later. But corner into two angest cause something that does not sit well in 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 yeah. Cause as a case that then you corner into shamans or is a zool. Okay. There's something I, but let me allow comrades to, so comrades, there we are, we've had the, the presentation outlining what they've done since the last time we met here. I think there were very few smiles at that time. Um, and this is the planning, this is what is happening. So there we are. Right, comrade Kekane. No, thanks, Chair. Chair, may, maybe to reiterate what you have just said, L listening to the presenter, it seems as if uh, the court hearing was yesterday. 
because I'm a bit concerned in terms of the timelines. But m m maybe the team would indicate to us, because my first question is on <coughs> court order seven to nine, the filing of the report, whether are they confident that uh, they will be ready, that is after the expiry of the 12 months, because I'm not convinced from what I hear. That's my first question. The second question would be on the court judgment of the 12, the 11 and 12, the appointment of independent experts. The presenter indicated that they have done their work, but other parties have not done that is their work. Now my question is, what are the implications that is of that? Because there is a court order that is very clear in terms of what should be done. And if the parties have not complied with the court, what are the implications that is thereof? Okay, come on. I'll take your two questions. No, I want I want them to respond so that we don't have any question that is that gets lost. Yes. Uh, thank you so much, Chair. Uh, the assurance that I'm, I can give to the committee is that Aguko Okshire Mans. There is something sinister that is taking place. We we are confident with what we have done up to so far. I we, no, I might have missed it. What I meant was not something sinister, but I meant there's something that I'm not feeling comfortable or okay. satisfied. I think something is missing in in, in, in the report vis-a-vis -vis okay. our expectations. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, was, I was taking that uh, member uh, that he said in Zulu Kshayamans is something that is sinister in Zulu. Okay. It so happened. I'm sorry that I have to, no, to explain that. Right. No, but there's nothing, there's nothing that is sinister that is taking place in any way. The issue of timelines on the, on the, for us to be able to, to file on the 17th, it is within uh, our, 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 our program that we will be filing on the, on the, on the 17th of, 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 of June. I'm, I'm, going to, I'm answering that together with the second one of the appointment of, of, of experts. I think the question is, what will you be filing? The substance of that filing, not just that you will file in time, but what is the substance? What will be the content? I think that's the essence of this question. By the time that we file, we would have come up with the business plan, which that's the reason why you're having the business, I mean the workshop with the post office tomorrow, because it needs to be incorporated in, into, into the, into the, into the plan of the things that we are, we are going to be uh, uh, telling the court, that things that are going to be doing, uh, taking going forward. And secondly, the, the, the issue of appointment of experts. The appointment of experts were asked as SASA and the minister to appoint or nominate people that needs to, 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 to be appointed by the court and other, other parties. We know that they have already filed because we have made an inquiry with the court and uh, we're told by the register that they are busy with it and uh, they will come back to us and revert back to us on to on to what is it that there's going to is going to happen on that on that front but we are clear that even if we do not get anything from the court the rule one court i mean but order was saying that we not, must file by no, the by the 17. Not just a minute I, I think the second question of comrade and if i got him well is in terms of the appointments of the experts, will you or have you, for your part, done your part? Yeah, I think uh, Ms. Mvulani has, has clearly said that we have appointed, I mean, we have nominated, and she even said that we have even engaged CSIR as, as the technical expect they've given us the, the names of the, doc, the doctor and another person that we're supposed to to nominate and they on the legal side we've have, have given the names uh, uh, to the court on our side so I it's more about processing from the court side it's, 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 it's right. on the hands of the court even if we do not get anything we will file right. on the 17th that's right. that's, that's what i wanted to say okay um yes comrade mente Uh, thanks, Chair. Uh, Chairperson, I, I'm still 
not hearing well what the department is going to be filing in court. What Ms. Mbulani have said to us is that they are going to adhere to the instruction. Adherence to the instruction means that. And if we have to look back prior the expiry of CPS contract, that was the same language we're hearing. We will adhere to what is supposed to be done. What we want to know is, what is it that you are doing at this moment that will put us at a very comfortable space to say, Sasa is, is going to be ready. Now, again, listening to the presentation, she said they have to look into five aspects and that will inform their state of readiness. But one of them was ICT. Then my concern becomes, there were work streams already in place. There were people that were paid. ICT was one of those people, and you are still going to look for. It doesn't make sense. Where are we? Where are we? What's happening? That's what we want to know. And then there's information CEO in the public space where there were no good relations between yourself and the minister, some of those papers you filed in the court. And you cited that as one of the reasons why you couldn't fulfill your or execute your duties. Are those hiccups sorted now? Are we not going to find ourselves in the very same space where someone was blocking else, someone else from doing the, what they were supposed to do in order for South Africa to realize the dream of creating jobs within the Department of Social Development? All right. Let me, let, me, let me cut you there. You two questions. Can they be responded to? Then uh, it's Lengwa. Then it's Comrade Kuno, Comrade uh, Boy. You'll be the first one after those three. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to take some. Okay. Jake, may, may I respond to the, to the ICT systems? Sure. Um, honorable member, the, we do know what is required of SASA in terms of the, the systems. What SASA is not ready, it's in relation to the procurement of such. There are 10 programs that needs, um, that, that SASA has to embark on coming from the Wexstreams report. The first one, it's um, just SASA having a payment system of which we don't have. The current application system, which is SOCPEN that we are using, it's not flexible enough to be able to um, include payment. Then now that we are also moving into a digital world and also dealing with payment, we need to um, work on our cyber and fraud uh, program and system. You know, maybe let me, comrades, unless if I'm, I'm missing this thing. You know, a CEO, two things. One. We needed to hear from you that when the CPS contract expires in 11 months, we as SASA <coughs> are going to take over and do the payments ourselves. And these are the measures that we're taking to fulfill that. Or for you to say, in 12 months when that contract expires, we will not be ready. We are going to procure a service provider to do it for us whilst we ready ourselves. And then you, 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 you focus and emphasize more on that process of ensuring that at the end of 12 months, we will have a service provider, we will have a legal contract, who will be able to provide services. The other element about reading yourself, I don't want it to muddle the, the explanation because it's two processes in one being explained at the same time. I think, I think, I think that's where the, the problem might be. Let's, let's separate them. Let's talk about who, will we have a legal contract when the CPS contract ends? And what are you doing to ensure that that is in place? SASA taking over, that's another process. When is it starting? Where is, what, are, what are its elements and what are your timelines? And separate these two so that we have clarity. 
Thank you so much, Chair. Mm. Uh, I tried a bit to explain that part on the issue of, I, was, I mentioned the issue of two to three years, maximum of five years that will take over as SASA. And I did mention on the fact that uh, the, we are going to have a workshop with po post office tomorrow but you see, in, pre you see, in preparation our, no, for... No, wait. Our letter said, let's come and talk about how you are complying with, with the court order. Uh, that's why I'm saying let's let's separate the two processes because when they they come in between okay. explanations, we we we. So let's talk about what happens in 12 months' time. Will we be having a legal contract with some service provider, or will Sasa take over? If you're not going to take over, how is that process? If you're going to take over, what is the process? Okay, <clears throat> simple. Come end of 12 months, CPS will not be part and parcel in terms of the court order. We'll be having another organization or sub SAPO having uh, helping us to get ourselves ready to take a, to take over two years to three years, minimum, maximum of five years. There will be a legal contract with the service provider, which we have already started with the post office in carrying ourselves up for built operating we transfer. We want you to actually go into the details of that process with SAPO because then that gives us the comfort that at least out of the 100 miles that you must travel to get SAPO in, so far you have covered 15 or you have covered 20 or you have covered 30. So we have a sense that at least there is a process that is unfolding. After tomorrow, then we'll be able to report to you because the workshop is tomorrow. Okay. Let's talk to the other issue of... Uh, um, what was the other issue? Was it... Uh, oh, yeah, the issue around relations, hindering progress. Have we sorted those things out? <laughs> what is what? Uh, uh, relationship between myself and the minister is a cordial relationship. It's an employer-employee relationship where we do agree to disagree on certain matters and agree on certain matters. As you can see, we can, we've can we been talking and we talk almost every day uh, with the minister. Uh, the issues of the affidavits that were there, of course, it is constitutional court issues. I, as an individual, had to defend myself on the things. I came on the 1st of November and uh, there is no way on earth that I would have been responsible for things that would have happened long before my time. Irrespective that I'm an accounting officer who takes lock, stock and barrel of what is happening, but I cannot be blamed for the things that I've not done. The unfortunate thing with what has happened is that it becomes an individual matter that if the constitutional court take what is written on the affidavit of the minister and say that I'm responsible for what has taken place, I may find myself in a state where I may not be able to defend anyway because there is no appeal court. Hence, I decided to put a, 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 an affidavit to defend my status and defend myself. Right. But when so, it comes to relationship with the yeah. minister, the relationship is cordial. Me and her, we talk almost daily. We do everything together as a department and, and SASA. That's, that's, that's why it is as it is right now. Okay. No, that's fine. Lengua? No, um, thank you, Chair. Even though what I said was off mic, I still maintain, Chair. My only comfort will be <clears throat> when I can find something tangible. That's why I maintain with Konuk Shamat. Because, Chair, you must be honest. The CPS deal contract remains in place for no other reason other than the fact that failing to plan is planning to fail. <coughs> And we landed with a bunch of crooks who continue to administer the dispensation of social grants to the most vulnerable of society. It took three years. We are now, what, 10 months to 11 months to April 1. I am not getting a sense of agency. In preparation for the 1st of April. And that's why I have a problem, Chair. Because that type of, I don't want to say lies a fair attitude, may be sounding as if I'm casting aspersions on Sasa, but borders on that, to say we will 
it will be aiding and abetting again another challenge. Because I'm getting a sense as if we're starting afresh, as if nobody knew just color pants, it's all new. Because this process is not a process that got created by the constitutional court judgment. <laughs> this was a matter which started three, it's just basic contract management. And I am echoing your sentiment, I am not getting a sense of what there is in fact, you know, now tomorrow, what, what else, what's being discussed with post office? We've met with post office. Meetings have happened with post office long ago. We are still going to workshop in preparation for a timeline. I, I'm, Chair, I must be very honest, I am not convinced. Even the defense that tomorrow we'll know about we're meeting with the post office certainly does not fly with me. Because the CEO, in fact, was with us when we met with the post office uh, uh, on, on our oversight and was afforded an opportunity to make, there he was with us in our meeting and was part and parcel of it. We are now going back Sayo Wekshopana again. No, Chair, you know, I, 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 I want to be very clear. I am not convinced. I will only be convinced by a tangible program of action timeline, <coughs> hook, line, and sinker, which says to us, we are here, we are here. I'm not buying this whole workshop thing. I, I, I just think it's, a, it's, a, it's an unsavory defense, Chair. Sasa really needs to play ball because... Please, just a minute. Please, somebody, check your phone. I've said switch off your cellular phones. I don't want to say it is those who came late. It is just those who don't comply. Just switch off your cellular phone. Continue, Clem. Chair, really, I, 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 in fact, maybe what I would request, can we be told, what, 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 what's this workshop tomorrow? What, what's, what, what will it be about? <coughs> Or is it just another meeting of entities, state entities, to talk again? I am expecting Uguti, we are being told, no, we're actually going to drill down on a timeline. I, 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 just, I just really want to ventilate that type of thing. I think if we do not learn from past mistakes, hindsight is the best sight. The department and SASA have been here before for just dragging their feet. And if this repeats itself, I mean, we make a mockery of the taxpayer and we are taking advantage of it. We, we, we induce another anxiety. So, Chair, I, 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 I mean, the CEO of the post office is here out through you, Chair. I am really, really interested. I, I, I hear all these niceties that have been cited here. So, Chair, I, I'm requesting, can we, for the comfort of this committee, at least what we know, because if you're going to start a fresh work that has already been done, well, this is work that should have been done long ago. Unless tomorrow's workshop, I can be told now, would no, no, no. Is that, but Mark Sotwa will, will only know tomorrow. Uslengwa does not buy it. Because UCPS remains in place and has got every intention of remaining in place even come 1st April 2018. We know exactly how they operate. They are a mafia type of grouping. All right. Okay. All right. CEO. I think, I think what we expected here, and I'm sure I'm speaking for all comrades before you respond, was for you to come and say, we as SASA will not be ready to take over fully. We are going to procure a service provider, and these are our timelines. By now, by this time, we'll have signed a contract. By this time, we'll be phasing them in. By this time, there will be 60% operational Come first April 2018, they will be 100 percent operational. That 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 conceptual framework that then guides you in terms of where you want to be by when, because then 
otherwise it takes us to where Lengwa is. That to just say, come 1st April 2018, everything will be fine without any timelines. I think it, it does create that gray space. I'm really not too sure how to respond to that, uh, Chair, because I've been saying that uh, <laughs> this workshop is going to help us. We, we already decided on the issue of the post office. There are things that the post office is going to do. But there are other issues of whether it's going to be the post office only that is going to work with us. So the workshop is going to help us with the post yeah, office no, to no, decide you see, you see on those issues. That's, that, that's probably that's how we should have started and said, we have decided... Number one, we're going to use the post office, but Oxele, to what extent? And if there are any areas left, who do we look for and by what time? So at least we have a sense of, of timelines. It is those details that we need. Those are details that we don't have right now until we have we finalized the post office. Comrade uh, Kuno. Thank you, Chairperson. Um, Thanks for the presentation, Mesod. Uh, Chairperson, I wanted to come in earlier as you were talking, and I thought uh, I wanted to simplify it because I don't think we are going to get the answer the way we're asking questions. And the way of uh, my simplifying it is that what, what is Sasa doing? You know, it, you know, we've heard the report. It's good English report, but it does not make sense. Because um, some of the things that are written in this report is the same report that we received before the court thing, the court case. When we had, when all of us in South Africa had a problem with uh, April 1st, and we were told April 1st, which happened. So we, we, um, we're not getting the gist of the whole matter. You know, uh, CEO, our problem, one of the problems that we have is when a government entity or a department does not have programs that it works on. You know, if you don't have programs with clear timelines, you are going to have a problem. And it might sound like Kitty Taylor or Ntotago Strating, you know, the relationships, but it goes a long way because if the relationships are not well balanced, it actually um, eats into the matter of working because you can't work if you, uh, the working relations are not okay. And I'm not getting a sense that you are part of this. Our problem. Not talking uh, as Ntabisem Kuno, but as uh, South Africans, was that today government does not have a database, SASA does not have a database of um, beneficiaries. That database is um, it's a property of CPS, which is a problem. How do you sell uh, such important property? into a, an individual who's not even South African. This is an American company. I mean, they are here to chow whatever that they chow, and then they go away with whatever. And at the end of the day, we have not benefited anything from them. They've been there, and, and the way the contract has been renewed, years and years, Chairperson, it has always been sinister. Why are we making them like, you know, if it's not CPS, then we cannot do anything? Why can't we have our own database? Why is government departments not coordinating themselves? Why are we working, you know, on a piecemeal? We'll never solve the problems that we have. The ICT systems ready, you know, when you read these reports and the, the legal reports, I have this, you know, the question that was asked the first time, I still have that question. We should have been, we should be having these people employed by SASA already. Because SASA already has a problem with money, with their budget, Shepherson. 
if they're going to employ other people outside of Sasa, where are they going to get that money to pay for those uh, employments? So it's all sorts of problems if you read this report. If you read, read it thoroughly and start to analyze it, it's actually not saying anything. It's not saying in 11 months, as you are saying, you know, with confidence. We, we have to be confident because we are public representatives. When we go back to our constituencies, people ask questions. This is, you know, at the heart of poor people. It's a bread and butter issue. There are grannies who have uh, to maintain eight people in a household right. with this Sasa money. So that's why I'm saying, Chairperson, we, we are not getting any answers. If, if we leave, let's leave this report and talk. I mean, if it's something that you are doing every day, let's talk about it. Tell us what's happening. Leave this report and tell us what is happening in simplified terms so that we can all be on the same, uh, same page because it seems like you understand and we don't understand what you are saying. Thanks, Chair. Thank you, Chairperson.